Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be raising a radical expression to the 12th power. Not just any ordinary number, a very special, a very golden number. In other words, the golden ratio. So what is golden ratio to the 12th power? Of course we have these constants here, a and b, so we're going to write our answer in this form, a plus b root 5. So we're going to basically find the a and b values, and at the end I'm going to show you a couple different results. Okay, great, so let's see how we can solve this problem in more than one way. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to focus on the following. I'm going to go ahead and separate the top and the bottom. So I'm going to write this as 1 plus root 5 to the 12th power divided by 2 to the 12th power. Is this a good method? Probably not, but let's see how that goes. Now we're going to need to raise 1 plus root 5 to the 12th power, and that can be done with the binomial theorem. If you just expand it, you're going to get 13 terms, which is not very good. So we might as well do the following. We could just square it, and then square it, and then square it, until we get to like 4th power, 8th would be too much, and then just cube it. That's one way to do it. Or you can just cube it, and then square twice after that, right? So there's a couple of different ways you can go about it. But let's see how that goes. Um, I'm going to start by cubing. And for cubing, I'm going to use a special formula. Remember, a plus b cubed can be written in different ways. And my favorite method is a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times a plus b, which is something that I use um, for cubic formula. Anyways, this is going to be 1 cubed. Some people don't like the word anyways because they say it's not a word. It's supposed to be anyway, but anyways, it, it works. So 5 root 5 is going to be root 5 cubed, remember that, plus 3ab is going to be 3 root 5, and that's going to be multiplied by 1 root 5. You can also use a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed from binomial theorem, same thing, but this is more convenient. I don't know. I just like it better. So now if you simplify this, you're going to get 1 plus 15, which is 16. So that's going to be, let's see, I'm going to write it down here, 16 plus 5 root 5 plus 3 root 5 is going to give me 8 root 5. Great. So something interesting happens here. When you cube 1 plus root 5, you basically get 2 to the third power, or just 8. I could probably just write 8 times 2 plus root 5, which is nice because, remember, we have 2 to the 12th power at the bottom, so we would like to have a power of 2 in the numerator, right? That would be helpful. This is just a cube, so let's go ahead and square this. If you square 1 plus root 5 to the third power, you're going to get the sixth power. So it's going to be 8 to the second and 2 plus root 5 to the second. It's not bad, but this is going to be 2 to the third. So let's write it as 2 to the sixth power because that's going to be more helpful. 4 plus 5 is 9 plus 4 root 5. And then I'm going to square one more time because this is 1 plus root 5 to the sixth power. And now let's go ahead and square both sides one more time. That's going to give us 1 plus root 5 to the 12th power. It wasn't bad, was it? Equals 2 to the 12th, which is nice. And I'm going to square this expression. 9 squared is 81. 4 root 5 squared is 80, right? 16 times 5 plus 36, 72 root 5. Awesome. One of the things I'd like you to... Uh, pay attention to is that if you square 9 and square this number and look at their difference, you're going to notice that it's actually 1, right? And also do the same thing with 2 and root 5, you're going to notice that their difference is 1 in absolute value. Of course, in this case, it's negative 1. Anyways, so they're related. Pals equations, so many other things. Anyways, so let's not get distracted. 2 to the 12, and now it's going to give me 161 plus 72 root 5. Wow, such a large number. But guess what? All I have to do is now divide this by 2 to the power 12. So 2 to the power 12 is just going to cancel out. Isn't that cool? So this is going to be divided on both sides by 2 to the 12. And the answer is going to be 161 plus 72 root 5. But what is that supposed to mean? Well, I was looking for AB values. So A is the constant and b is the coefficient of 
72. In other words, A is equal to 161 and B is 72. Okay? Make sense? Okay, great. So let's see if we can uh, approach this problem from a different angle. So we have 1 plus root 5 over 2, again, to the power 12 equals A plus root 5B. Okay. So one of the things that I can think of right away, and I haven't planned this in advance, by the way, you can tell, is, is the conjugate. If you think about the conjugate, I'm probably going to get something like this. And if I multiply these two things together, that should give me something, right? I'm going to be getting 1 minus 5 divided by 4 to the 12th power is supposed to be a squared minus 5b squared. From difference of two squares, obviously, right? And 1 minus 5 is negative 4. That's positive 1. I mean negative 1. And negative 1 to 12 power is just going to be positive 1. So when I solve the equation, this is what I meant by the Pell's equation. This is a Pell's equation. a squared minus 5b squared equals 1 is going to be the relationship between a and b. Of course, we, this is just one single equation. I still need another equation to find the values of a and b. Another thing I can think of is I can go ahead and add these up. And from the binomial theorem, the ones with the plus sign and the minus sign, they're going to cancel out, leaving us with, you know, some terms. And on the right-hand side, when we add these two things, the b's are going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with 2a, which might give us the value of a. And of course, a is supposed to be 161, so that's going to be a lot of work. But at the end, we're going to be getting the value of a, therefore, we're going to be getting the value of b as well. Okay, so is there any other way we can approach this problem? Let's go ahead and think about an alternative approach. So we have 1 plus root 5 divided by 2, and we're supposed to raise it to the 12th power. Okay, so one thing you can think about is, can I actually find an equation who takes this as a root? Could be quadratic, quartic, cubic, I don't know. But let's go ahead and call this x, okay? And I'm going to do the following. I'm going to set this equal to x. And then this is going to give me 1 plus root 5 equals 2x. And then I'll be subtracting 1 from both sides because my goal is to isolate the radical and then square both sides. Oh, my goal is to get a polynomial and, which I can manipulate because I do need x to the 12th power, don't I? So this gives me 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 5. And from here I get 4x squared minus 4x minus 4 equals 0. And that's just awesome, isn't it? Think about it. So this gives me x squared equals x plus 1 if I put these two terms on the uh, right-hand side. And then from here... I get my super duper important formula. I know x squared, can I find x to the power 12, right? How do you find it though? Well, here's the thing. I can, if I can find x to the 12 in terms of x, then I'm in good shape. So here's what we can do. Since we know that x squared is x plus 1, I can try to evaluate x to the 4th power from here. Let's try it. Square both sides. That's going to give me x squared plus 2x plus 1. But x squared can be written as x plus 1. So x to the fourth is going to be 3x plus 2. Awesome. That's just another formula for the fourth power. Now, I do need the 12th power, so you might just cube this, right? Or if you want to multiply by x squared, you, you're going to get, well, not by x squared. Yeah, you could multiply by x squared and then square it. But uh, cubing, uh, I guess, would be easier. So let's cube both sides. And we're going to get something, hopefully, from here. Because that's going to give me x to the power 12. That should be my answer. Okay, great. So x to the 12 is going to be. Now, how do you cube this again? Cube the first term. Cube the second term. Multiply them together and triple that. So that's going to be 18x. And that's going to be multiplied by 3x plus 2. Remember the formula? And x to the 12 from here is going to be 27x cubed plus 54x squared plus 36x plus 8. Awesome. What is x cubed? Do I know it? I don't. But I can find it. x cubed actually can be found from x squared just by multiplying both sides by x. So x cubed is going to be x plus 1, which is x squared times x. That's x squared plus x. But x squared is x plus 1. So this is going to be 
2x plus 1. So you see, we can pretty much linearize any power because we can do it. It's a polynomial, right? So now, let's go ahead and replace x cubed with this and x squared with that, whatever they are. And then we're going to simplify our expression and find something linear again, right? Oopsies. The graph or the results are coming up, so I have, I have to hurry. So now here, I have to fit it here. 27 multiplied by x cubed, which is 2x plus 1, plus 54x squared, which is, three. what is x squared? x plus 1, not x to the fourth, x plus 1, and then 36x plus 8. So what I got to do now is, let me go ahead and clean this area, because I am going to have to move my stuff up a little bit so that I don't show you the stuff yet, okay? So let me go ahead and move this up a little bit, like this, there we go. And now, we're gonna go ahead and simplify this. So x to the power 12 is gonna be, let's see, this is gonna give me 54x, another 54, 108. 108 plus 36 is gonna be 144x, great. And then, I'm going to be getting 27 plus 54 plus 8. What is that? 54 plus 27 is 81. 81 plus 8 is 89. Awesome. How do you find x to the power 12 from here, right? Well, you do know what x is, don't you? 1 plus root 5 over 2. Uh-oh, this wasn't a good method, but anyways, you get the idea. 1 plus root 5 over 2. And then all you have to do is simplify this expression and, you know, just find the answer because you're looking for x to the power 12. Notice that 2 goes into... 144, 72 times, when you distribute, when you distribute, hopefully you're going to get the right answer, right? Okay. I don't know uh, if this is actually going to work or we made a mistake. Oh, yes, I know how it is because we're going to add 72 and 89, right? Aren't we supposed to add those? So yes, exactly. And when we add them, I think it's going to work, hopefully, if I didn't make any mistakes. But here's what happens. A 72 plus 89 is going to be 161 and plus 72 root 5 as before yay we got it so that's gonna be the answer with the third method and let's go ahead and take a look at some of the findings this is the result from desmos well it's just numerical but if you look at the result from or from alpha of course you're gonna get more details and two forms 161 plus 72 root 5 or the other one and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.